Hello and welcome to Chess with Simon. I'm Simon. Our first team captain, Ian Bush, went off to Penzance to play in a tournament. I think he, he won it. I think he was joint first. Um, we're going to have a look at the first game. We'll probably look at some others later on. Uh, so Ian is playing the white side of a Sicilian defence. Uh, so Ian plays 2d4. So this is heading towards a Smith Mora Gambit. Black accepts. Um, and then Ian plays pawn c3 to go into the uh, well-known Smith Mora Gambit. Now what white can do here is actually is play knight f3. And then if black tries to hang on to the pawn with um, e5, I mean, there's a lot wrong with that move. So what you can't do is take it, right, because it's a queen check that wins your knight. Um, this is not good because a queen a5 check but what you can do is play pawn c3 and you get a better version of the um, of the smith mora but anyway Ian didn't do that he went straight for the pure smith mora black took again black players if they don't want to face the mora they can play knight f6 here and um, transpose into a c3 sicilian after a move like e5, knight d5, takes here, you're back into the c3 or the Alapin variation. But um, black was sporting enough to accept the challenge. So black took here, white took back. Pawn e6 is a good move. Um, anticipating bishop c4 and setting up a kind of defense uh, against the f7 square. White develops a knight, black develops a knight, white plays bishop c4, I think almost always in the smith Mora the bishop's coming to c4. Uh, black plays the engine move here, bishop b4, pinning that knight. It's a good move. Um, white castles, and but already now, this is a mistake from black, taking that knight. It's understandable because when white castled, white freed that knight uh, from the pin. But uh, so I understand why Black thought of liquidating it. But the problem is now that the white dark squared bishop is unopposed on the dark squares. Black has a weakness on d6 and is a little way from castling. And unfortunately, Black makes it worse by playing queen c7. Now it's understandable this because this is where the queen goes in the Schwenningen variation and in the um, in the Paulson. Uh, so it's understandable to combine queen c7 with uh, with pawn e6. Also, you've got that loose bishop on the on c4, so it gives black some ideas. But unfortunately, white's got this great move, bishop a3, and immediately you just look at that and go, well, black's got uh, his work cut out, castling, um, and that bishop just looks so strong on those dark squares. You know, d6 is such a weak square. Again, now this is probably, unfortunately, the decisive mistake, knight e5. Um, now, there's a general rule against moving your pieces twice in the opening. Now you do it in the Alakin, you do it in certain lands, the Karakhan and the Sicilian, so it happens, but um, in this case it's wrong. And the point is that black is on uh, playing against a gambit, the Smith Mora, where white has given up a pawn for uh, Tempe. And so consequently black has to be very careful about wasting more Tempe. I mean, I think maybe Black wants to swap pieces here to take the sting out of the white attack, but unfortunately, Black is exchanging uh, his only active minor piece. So, takes with a queen, a pawn f4. Uh, the observant viewer will notice that the c3 pawn is hanging, but I mean, without analyzing it too deep deeply, you know, take on c3, queen d6 after that looks really bad. <laughs> probably the end of the game but it's just like there's just no time to take on c3 uh you know that that's not you know a good idea queen c7 uh, isn't a bad move uh, certainly means that queen d6 is less dangerous because you can exchange the queens and it's attacking the bishop on c4 white defends the bishop on c4 while attacking that vulnerable g pawn and again black is missing the dark square bishop Pawn f6 uh, is understandable to, in fact, it's the engine move, which just shows how desperate black is because it's an ugly move. I mean, f6 isn't always wrong, but 
in this position you want to be developing pieces and that's just taking the square away from the knight it's weakening the king's side it just looks it doesn't look right even though it is the best in the position but it's because black's basically busted um bishop d6 is a good move it's just occupying that weak square kicking the queen again queen makes a bad choice and now f5 engine move it is a really good choice just creating some confrontation between those pawns and looking to open the the light squared bishops diagonal looking to open the line for the rook so developing a knight looks sensible in fact the engine wants it to go to h6 but frankly nothing works here um and white just says right i'm going to open all the lines i'm just going to force an opening of lines here uh and again that was the engine's choice it's very interesting this feels natural the knight coming to c6 hitting the queen unfortunately it's just too late um queen g4 attacking that weak pawn again black finds the engine move taking on on e5 but as we can see white can just pick up that knight and then when black takes back the g7 pawn drops and this is an absolute crisis because black you know that rook is hanging with check so you could put it on f8 but if it goes to f8 i assume that fe is the is the big problem because then that that rook on f8 is not really defendable and the f8 square is not really defendable so yeah the engine wants to take here and and, and just recognizes that it's kind of all over because um you know the rook can't be defended and, and then the square can't be defended if, if black exchanged on f1 and then you've got this pawn that's still around so uh rook f8 doesn't look right um george actually paid queen e7 which is the engine move um but oh no george didn't play that george didn't play that actually what happened is george played rook f8 and then ian played my recommendation sorry i just hadn't looked at this in detail ian played fe and then george played a sensible move here um, maybe trying to get the queens off and unfortunately ian's got this well fortunately for ian but unfortunately for george ian's got this killer move um rook f7 which is one of those moves where you just see it just provokes an absolute crisis for black because um you can't take that because white's taking back with the pawn which is a check and it's just kind of queening i mean let's say you can't take with the queen let's say you took with the rook it's a check the king's got a move and then the pawn's queening right so that's just the end of days so you can't take it if the queen runs i mean let's just, let's do a check here and the king goes in the corner the point is taking the pawn again is a catastrophe and moving the rook well, where's the rook going to go because it gets taken everywhere right so it's just and i mean look at the black queen side you know the problem is just the problem is development and actually if we go back here to this position here all black's pieces are on the starting squares um which is just not where you want to be and even that was even true here all black's pieces are on the starting squares <laughs> so just to recap the final sequence which i slightly bungled what happens is white takes here black takes there white exchanges white takes here and then black did play rook f8 in an attempt to hold on but really then fe um is the end of days and black tries to fight on with with bishop e7 but this move hitting the queen um just makes it clear that black can't hold and at that point black resigned um so maybe there were two more moves were there two more moves tried queen d6 and then maybe push the pawn um but you know it's just too much and i suppose what my sort of overall thought would be it was a really good game I think what it shows is if you're playing against the Mora as black, you've got to know what you're doing. You've got to have a system that you use against the Mora and you've got to know it at least 10, 12 moves deep because um, disasters can happen. 
it's a sharp line. There's all sorts of beautiful tricks in there. And unfortunately, taking on c3 was slightly astray. You know, knight g7 is the move, just develop the knight. Taking on c3 was slightly astray. And then, okay, the queen move was also slightly astray. And then this knight move, you just can't do that. You know, you've got to play knight g7. And then there's a big grovel because the bishop's going to start living on d6. Anyway, great game by Ian. Um, you know, very natural attack. He knows this system very well. And I would say a good first round of the tournament. In later videos, we will look at other things that happened.